Socialism in India is a political movement founded early in the 20th century, as a part of the broader Indian independence movement against the colonial British Raj. It grew quickly in popularity as it espoused the causes of India's farmers and labourers against the zamindars, princely class and landed gentry. Socialism shaped the principal economic and social policies of the Indian government after independence until the early 1990s, when India moved towards a more market-based economy. However, it remains a potent influence on Indian politics, with a large number of national and regional political parties espousing democratic socialism. Small socialist revolutionary groups arose in India in the aftermath of the Russian Revolution. The Communist Party of India was established in 1921, but socialism as an ideology gained a nationwide appeal after it was endorsed by nationalist leaders such as Jawaharlal Nehru and Subhas Chandra Bose. Radical socialists were amongst the first to call for outright Indian independence from Britain. Under Nehru, the Indian National Congress, India's largest political party, adopted socialism as an ideology for socio-economic policies in 1936. Radical socialists and communists also engineered the Tabaga movement of farmers in Bengal against the landed gentry. However, mainstream Indian socialism connected itself with Gandhism and adopted peaceful struggle instead of class warfare. After India's independence in 1947, the Indian government under Prime Ministers Nehru and Indira Gandhi oversaw land reform and the nationalisation of major industries and the banking sector. Independently, activists Vinoba Bhavi and Jayaprakash Narayan worked for peaceful land redistribution under the Sarvadaya movement, where landlords granted land to farm workers out of their own free will. In the 1960s, the Communist Party of India formed India's first democratically elected communist government when it won elections in the states of Kerala and later West Bengal. However, when a global recession began in the late 1970s, economic stagnation, chronic shortages and state inefficiency left many disillusioned with state socialism. In the late 1980s and 1990s, India's government began to systematically liberalise the Indian economy by pursuing privatisation, aiming to attract foreign investment. Nevertheless, the Congress Party continues to espouse some socialist causes, and other major parties such as the Communists, Samajwadi Party, Bahujan Samaj Party and several others openly espouse socialism. Topic history The socialist movement began to develop in India with the Russian Revolution. However, in 1871 a group in Calcutta had contacted Karl Marx with the purpose of organising an Indian section of the First International. It did not materialise. The first article in an Indian publication in English that mentions the names of Marx and Engels printed in the Modern Review in March 1912. The short biographical article titled Karl Marx, a modern Rishi was written by the German-based Indian revolutionary Lala Hardayal. The first biography of Karl Marx in an Indian language was written by R. Rama Krishna Pillai in 1914. Marxism made a major impact in Indian media at the time of the Russian Revolution. Of particular interest to many Indian papers and magazines was the Bolshevik policy of right to self-determination of all nations. Bipin Chandra Pal and Bal Gangadhar Tilak were amongst the prominent Indians who expressed their admiration of Lenin and the new rulers in Russia. Abdul Sitar Khairi and Abdul Zabur Khairi went to Moscow, immediately on hearing about the revolution. In Moscow, they met Lenin and conveyed their greetings to him. The Russian Revolution also affected émigré Indian revolutionaries, such as the Ghadar Party in North America. The Khilafat movement contributed to the emergence of early Indian communism. Many Indian Muslims left India to join the defense of the Caliphate. Several of them became communists whilst visiting Soviet territory. Some Hindus also joined the Muslim Mahahirs in the travels to the Soviet areas. The colonial authorities were clearly disturbed by the growing influence of Bolshevik sympathies in India. A first counter-move was the issuing of a fatwa, urging Muslims to reject communism. The Home Department established a special branch to monitor the communist influence. Customs were ordered to check the imports of Marxist literature to India. A great number of anti-communist propaganda publications were published. The First World War was accompanied with a rapid increase of industries in India, resulting in a growth of an industrial proletariat. At the same time prices of essential commodities increased. These were factors that contributed to the build-up of the Indian trade union movement. Unions were formed in the urban centres across India, and strikes were organised. 
In 1920, the All India Trade Union Congress was founded. One Indian impressed with developments in Russia was S. A. Dang in Bombay. In 1921, he published a pamphlet titled Gandhi vs. Lenin, a comparative study of the approaches of both the leaders, with Lenin coming out as better of the two. Together with Ranchadas Bhavan Latvala, a local mill owner, a library of Marxist literature was set up and publishing of translations of Marxist classics began. In 1922, with Latvala's help, Dang launched the English Weekly, Socialist, the first Indian Marxist journal. Regarding the political situation in the colonized world, the 1922nd Congress of the Communist International insisted that a united front should be formed between the proletariat, peasantry, and national bourgeoisie in the colonized countries. Among the 21 conditions drafted by Lenin ahead of the Congress was the 11th Thesis, which stipulated that all Communist parties must support the bourgeois democratic liberation movements in the colonies. Some of the delegates opposed the idea of alliance with the bourgeoisie, and preferred support to Communist movements of these countries instead. Their criticism was shared by the Indian revolutionary M. N. Roy, who attended as a delegate of the Communist Party of Mexico. The Congress removed the term bourgeois democratic in what became the eighth condition. The Communist Party of India was founded in Tashkent on the 17th of October 1920, soon after the Second Congress of the Communist International. The founding members of the party were M. N. Roy, Evelina Trench Roy, Roy's wife, Abani Mukherjee, Rosa Fitting of Abani's wife, Muhammad Ali, Ahmed Hassan, Muhammad Shafiq Siddiqui, and M. P. B. T. Acharya, the CPI began efforts to build a party organization inside India. Roy made contacts with Anushilan and Gigantar groups in Bengal. Small communist groups were formed in Bengal led by Muzaffar Ahmed, Bombay led by S. A. Dang, Madras led by Singaravalu Chetir, United Provinces led by Shakat Usmani and Punjab led by Ghulam Hussain. However, only Usmani became a CPI party member. On the 1st of May 1923, the Labour Kisan Party of Hindustan was founded in Madras by Singaravalu Chettiar. The LKPH organized the first May Day celebration in India, and this was also the first time the red flag was used in India. On the 25th of December 1925, a communist conference was organized in Kanpur. Colonial authorities estimated that 500 persons took part in the conference. The conference was convened by a man called Satyabhakta, of whom little is known. Satyabhakta is said to have argued for a national communism and against subordination under Comintern. Being outvoted by the other delegates, Satyabhakta left both the conference venue in protest. The conference adopted the name Communist Party of India. Groups such as LKPH dissolved into the unified CPI. The émigré CPI, which probably had little organic character anyway, was effectively substituted by the organization now operating inside India. Currently, Marxism is especially prevalent in Kerala, West Bengal and Tripura. The two largest communist parties in Indian politics are the Communist Party of India Marxist and the Communist Party of India. The RSP and Forward Bloc support them in some states. These four parties constitute the Left Democratic Front. There are a large number of smaller Marxist parties, including the Communist Party of India Marxist-Leninist, Marxist Communist Party of India, Marxist Coordination Committee in Jharkhand, Janathapathya Samrakshana Samathi, Communist Marxist Party and BTRM's AKG Janakya Vedi in Kerala, Mazdor Mukti Workers Emancipation and Party of Democratic Socialism in West Bengal, Jenganatantrik Morcha in Tripura, the Ram Pasla Group in Punjab, and the Orissa Communist Party in Orissa. Political parties At the 1931 Karachi session of the Indian National Congress, socialist pattern of development was set as the goal for India. Through the 1955 Avadai Resolution of the Indian National Congress, a socialistic pattern of development was presented as the goal of the party. A year later, the Indian Parliament adopted socialistic pattern of development as official policy, a policy that came to include land reforms and regulations of industries. The word socialist was added to the preamble of the Indian Constitution by the 42nd Amendment Act of 1976, during the emergency. It implies social and economic equality. Social equality in this context means the absence of discrimination on the grounds only of caste, color, creed, sex, religion, or language. 
Under social equality, everyone has equal status and opportunities. Economic equality in this context means that the government will endeavor to make the distribution of wealth more equal and provide a decent standard of living for all. Following independence, the Indian government officially adopted a policy of non alignment, although it had an affinity with the USSR. The party's commitment to socialism has waned in recent years, particularly following the assassination of Indira Gandhi and her son Rajiv Gandhi. Elected in 1991, the government of Narasimha Rao introduced economic liberalization with the support of Finance Minister Manmohan Singh, the former Prime Minister of India. Communists were also active in the Indian independence movement and have played a significant role in India's political life, although they are fragmented into a multitude of different parties. Communist parties represented in parliament are statistics from 2004 general elections Communist Party of India Marxist 43 seats in the Lok Sabha the Communist Party of India 10 seats the Revolutionary Socialist Party 3 seats and the All India Forward Bloc 3 seats The former speaker of the Lok Sabha Somnath Chatterjee is a member of the CPI M Left front parties remain an independent faction in the parliament critical of the policies of both the government and that of the mainstream opposition parties. Aside from the Congress and the left front, there are other socialist parties active in India, notably the Samajwadi Party, which emerged from the Janata Dal and is led by Mulayam Singh Yadav, the former chief minister of Uttar Pradesh. It has five seats in the 16th Lok Sabha. Noted Indian socialists include the founding leader of the All India Forward Bloc and the Indian National Army Subhas Chandra Bose and the country's first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru. See also Communism in Kerala Fabian Society List of political parties in India Marxist historiography Politics of India Secularism in India Topic. Further reading Communism in India, V.S. Kodaswara Rao. Communist Parties and United Front, Experience in Kerala and West Bengal. Hyderabad, Prajasakti Book House, 2003. Goal, S.R. 1955. Nataji and the CPI. Calcutta, Society for Defense of Freedom in Asia. Goal, S.R. 1953. CPI Conspires for Civil War, Analysis of a Secret Document. Calcutta, Society for Defense of Freedom in Asia. Shori, Arun 1991. The Only Fatherland. Communists. Quit India. And the Soviet Union. New Delhi, ASA Publications. Shori, Arun 2013. Self-Deception, India's China Policies, Origins, Premises, Lessons. Noida, HarperCollins Publishers India. Swaroop, Ram 1954. Communism and Peasantry, Implications of Collectivist Agriculture for Asian Countries. Calcutta, Prachi Prakashan. Swaroop, Ram 1955. Gandhism and Communism, Principles and Technique. New Delhi, J. Prakashan. Spratt, P. 1955. Blowing Up India, Reminiscences and Reflections of a Former Comintern Emissary. Calcutta, Prachi Prakashan. References External links Where We Stand, by Mazdor Mukti Socialism Kills, The Human Cost of Delayed Economic Reform in India